So That's sit back scary. and relax. That's scary. Melanie That's P. Scary. Talk That's to him. Scary with Melanie P. That's scary with Melanie P. Come on. Here we go. Y'all gonna understand one day why I have this stick in my hand. I'll have to explain it in another episode. But welcome to another episode of the That Scary with Melanie P podcast, where every episode I'm gonna adjust my mic before we start because I'm not prepared. And we talk about everything from finances to love to sex to marriage and everything in between. We have a special guest today who actually showed up and did not cancel last minute. So we give her a round of applause for that. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the show. <laughs> give us, give us a little introduction of who you are, where you're from, and all the good stuff you want to know. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, so I'm Krishina. Um, I'm originally from South Carolina, but I've been here for quite some time now. Nice. Um yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> You're upcoming realtor. You're a mother. You're I a wife. I am. I am all of those things. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I've um, been in the mortgage industry for nice. quite some time. Um, was doing my thing as an underwriter. Loved it. Oh, wow. Worked for a really great company. Nice. And then rates went up. Ooh, rates. And the evil <laughs> rates. Oh, my God. That, that's changed the game for everybody and everything. Yes, yes. And so, oh like, yeah, we went through, like, a crazy layoff. It made the news. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Because our CEO laid off everybody over yeah. Zoom. But the company over was. Over Zoom? Well, we were, we were remote. Oh, So, oh, oh, for everybody God. else who weren't, they weren't a part of that mm. world, it was, like, really, really weird. But it was, like, normal oh, I guess for remote, people yeah. who. Yeah, it's like we work remote. There is no office to go wow. to to, like, have this conversation, so. Jesus, did y'all have any kind of, like, idea that that was going to happen that day? Well, I was on maternity leave mm -hmm. when they did the first round, which mm -hmm. was, like, the one that made the news. It was, like, 900 people. Yeah. Um, so, no. Jesus. We didn't know that it was happening. However, as mm -hmm. things, like, progressed and there was more and more laid off, like, mm -hmm. I was on... I was on maternity leave for, whoo, I think like six or seven months. Really? So by the time I went back, um, it was it was weird. Really? So like, yeah, like you could kind of tell. Jesus. Yeah, you like because everybody was like on pins and needles of like, Ugh. okay, are we done yet? Like, mm. there's no loans coming in. What are we gonna do? Wow. Yeah. So was it like silence? You know what I'm saying? Like, so with no loans coming in, were y'all just kind of like not doing nothing? Or well, by that time I was in training, okay. so. I was jumping on different projects here okay. and there, but I could tell because when I was, before I went on maternity leave, mm. I was training um, incoming underwriters. Wow. And so we would have to, we didn't have like a a test file for you to train on. So yeah. we'd have to go get live yeah. actual loans to hand out. for. Well, every episode, we start the episode with a mental health check-in. How are you doing? How are your week? So if you listened to last week's episode, and I know you did, um, I went to the Beyonce concert. Did you go? No, oh I'm okay. God. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. There's more. There is more. No, so originally I was like, okay, Beyonce's coming. I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> However, when I went to look at the tour dates, I was like, oh, she's going to be in Miami on my birthday. Oh, wow. Yes. So I was like, Charlotte Miami, or yeah. Miami on my birthday. Yeah, that's different. That's a different yeah. energy. So Friday. Is it this at, Friday? Yes, ma'am. Oh, let me tell you something, girl. That kind. So I ended up going like last minute, mm -hmm. and thank God I did. Jana ended up going up last minute too. Like, like, like we all got our tickets a couple of days before the concert. And when I tell you, it was like all this hoopla about, oh my God, it's the best thing. It is so amazing. You're gonna have, and I can, I can only imagine in Miami. Oh, oh I cannot my God. wait. Ooh, I cannot drinks. wait. Jesus. I got my four year old singing. You won't break my. <laughs> Right. Oh my God. The concert was amazing. My week now, let me just give a disclaimer. I just had um dental stuff going on, so my face is a little bit swollen. Oh, it swollen. Girl, oh my well that's that's horrible because it is swollen. <laughs> I'm not I'm my face is swollen. Um the concert was good. So I went to the concert Thursday night. That was banging. That was an experience. Um then the very next day I had to go in for like dental stuff. Um, and they numbed me and sedated me. And I was like, and I was, it was just a whole thing. So my face was swollen. Um, but I had a, I've had a really good week now, you know, I have a baby, you have a baby. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like going out in the middle of the week, 
was different. You know, like going out, out. Like the concert started at like nine, eight or nine, but we had to be there. We had to leave because of traffic by like 6.45. So from 6.45, I got back home about one o'clock in the morning oh, and then Lord. I had to work the next day. And then that night the baby was up and she's never up, but that night she decided to be up. So it was just like going out, in on a weekday was just like, oh shit, I, am I still young anymore? <laughs> right. I was tired. You got to recover. <laughs> when I tell you the next day, and I hope my job is not listening, the next day I was sitting, I was just about to pass out. I was tired, but it was worth it. Okay. I'm going to have so much fun. It was so worth it. My mental health is good. How is your mental health? How has your week been? What's going on mentally with you? I'm good because I'm chilling, like trying to get it's ready. It's your birthday. Yes. Oh, yes. And we just celebrated my daughter's birthday. Oh my God. So that Two was, Leos? Yes. Ooh, in the same household. Jesus. Like, pray, pray for you. We're going to pray else. for you. I like Leos, though. So, what is your husband? He's a Virgo. Oh, see, ba my baby's a Virgo. They're very, ooh. From what I know, they're very like structure. They like structure. Well, my husband must, he, he must he be like creamy or something. Oh, know. Lord. <laughs> or maybe he on the cusp of another no. sign or something. No, not oh at all. Oh, my God. He's not? Mm -mm. No, he's a creative spirit, though. Mm. So he's oh. very, like, in the moment. Okay. That's and a good way to put it. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. In the moment. Okay. I can, I can deal with that. In yeah. Mm. Okay. So we have a special episode. This is an episode that is long overdue. Y'all have asked for it. I've asked for it. This is something that you listen. I always say every single episode about transparent, raw topics, real deal. We are discussing today. Shit. <laughs> you should discuss before you move in together conversations you should have. But before we go into our discussion, we have a quick little hot topic. and I need to get your opinion on this. So I was listening to another podcast and I was looking at the shade room where we get all our news and information from. <laughs> from um and four from um black ink was saying how he likes to get pegged and so i'm like what the hell is pegged and then i looked it up and it is when your partner puts on a strap on and they i guess they insert you meaning the man anally <laughs> okay and he was saying that you know he loves for a dominant woman to do this and he's not gay um, but he just likes for his partner to put on the strap on and insert him anally. So I was talking to a friend yesterday and she was, she told me that her ex-husband asked her to do this to her and they're no longer together. Wait a <laughs> they're minute. no longer together. But that's what, that's what I said. I said, what? So her ex-husband just randomly asked if she could put on a strap on and insert him. She didn't do it. And they got divorced maybe like a year or two later. What are your thoughts? Now you've been married for several okay. years. If your husband of several years came to you and said, please buy the strap on and insert me anally, what would you say? I think I would have like a stuck <laughs> face. Like, <laughs> is this happening right now? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I want to try to be open in a yeah. way that I think about it because I would appreciate him coming to me, yeah. like to have the conversation. So I would be like trying to <laughs> tread lightly, I guess, before I just say hell no. Nah. Yeah. But I would, I don't know. That's a no. So mm -mm. it seems interesting because, you know, y'all been married for what, seven? No, we've only been married for, this is year one. Y'all been married for one year? Yes, we just oh, been together wow. for, yeah. I wasn't sure I wanted to like sign the paperwork. Mm. How do you feel now that you've done it? Listen, how do you feel now that you've done it? We'll let you not answer that question. I'm sure you're happy. I love uh, I love being in a relationship mm. with him. It was just like, well, why we got to like. Really? So you didn't want to get married? No, it wasn't that I didn't want to get married. Yeah, like I've right. always wanted to be married. Yeah. But it was, I don't like other people dictating mm. how I do things. Nice. Yeah. So like the whole contract part of it. Yes. Mm. So like we love to say we do everything backwards. Yeah. We bought two houses and had two kids before we got married. <laughs> wow. Well, should I see, I respect that. Yes. I like that. I like that. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we've only been married for a year. Mm -hmm. We've been together for seven. I think it's seven. I can't. I also cannot keep up with anniversaries. <laughs> so we were really happy to be married. Right. So we had an actual anniversary. Right. Yeah. So now we're trying to keep up with that. Yeah. You know, the paperwork does come in handy. So yeah. But I won't date, forget. Right. Right. Exactly. Wow. But yeah, so if you asked in. me, 
I don't, oh. I mean, I wouldn't want to hurt his feelings yeah. because you know, like when you are in a relationship and you care about somebody, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Yeah. But I would still have to say, like, hell no, nah, and and question, like, would where you, is that coming from? After seven years of being together, and this man comes to you and he's just like. I'm not gay. This is something that I would enjoy. This is another phase of our sexual exploring. Would you consider it? Now tell the truth. Would you consider it? Now would I consider it? Like if he really was like wanting me to do it and if I'm open enough you know what i'll probably say hell no when he first asked me and then yeah. i think about it some more and then say hell no and after then- <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's what i would say like can we talk about because right. I, I love to talk about some things yeah. now so um where did this come from like yeah. did somebody tell you but like how do we get here yeah. that's my question so if he because i think forehead this is nothing new to him so he's he's done it in other relationships but but how like how did that become a thing i don't know that's I what know. i want to know I don't know. And it's okay if you like it. Yeah. Like, so I you like, wouldn't look at him sideways after? Would I look at? I guess it depends on the story. In my it. relationship, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna look at you sideways. Yeah. In somebody else's relationship, okay, do you? Boo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because see, I'm thinking, I'm like you. I'm thinking, now how did this start? Like, yeah. how have you done this with a real penis? You know, I, I got questions. I got a thousand questions. I want to know because I do know. I well, I've heard that. Like, I guess that's a pleasurable spot for a man you know like for i guess you know, okay I guess I gave okay you yeah so like, i guess it's very pleasurable for a man um but i just you know i sat there and i thought about this and i'm like the thought of me because i i don't i don't think i've ever seen a strap on but i'm what i'm imagining is that something you have to step into and then pull up like underwear and then it's this penis hanging from it so <laughs> all i'm thinking is like i'm Standing there, my partner's bent over in front of me. I have to step into this penis apparatus. And then, like, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. I think, like, in the process of yeah. it, I could understand how, like, you would have to tap into, like, your masculine energy in order to like, perform the action. But mm-hmm. then how am I going to look at you? Like, even if I were to say, okay, let's try Bending this, right? Him over, then, yes, that's the part. Mm-mm, no. Bending him Mm-mm. over. And then, no, because uh, I need you to be my protector. I need you to be my I provider. Know. Like, I need, no. And that to me, that's too much femininity yeah. coming from you. And yeah. that I don't want to switch those roles. And see, this is the thing, because I, I thought about this in depth. And it's like, you know, I can be kind of prudish sometimes when it comes to sex, I'm not going to lie. But it's like, if a person is that trusting of their partner and this is just something they they're saying that they're not gay i don't and i don't want to be canceled i don't think that <laughs> you know i don't think that like that means you're gay does it i don't think so so no because like, i feel like people like different things yeah yeah but then it's like because that's just a fake part so you gonna want you could want the real thing i don't know because then like okay so this is how i'm thinking about yeah. it if you are interested in that area mm-hmm. being explored, <laughs> right. right? But you're attracted to a woman. Does that change? Like the fact that a man has a penis and he could he has the equipment to go explore that mm-hmm. area with you. Does that cause you to be attracted to him? That's a good point. Yeah, mm. because I don't feel yeah. like that's a good way of thinking of it. Yeah, yeah. I, but I mean, for that's good for other people yeah. who want to explore that. In my relationship, that ain't that's not how that's gonna mm. work. And it's kind of messed up because um, I was watching another thing, and like this gay dude was saying how that's what's wrong with black men. Black men don't feel comfortable expressing themselves sexually and being on the down low, like coming out because of stuff like I guess how we're both of us are kind of saying like we'll, we, we we would tell our man no. Um, but the thing about it is, this guy is saying that he's not gay. So like if my partner graphic bit said hey i think i might be bisexual or i could possibly be gay that's a whole different story like i'm sorry i don't you know i don't really want to be a part of that um but if a, a man black or white blue was just saying this is something that i want to i can't even, I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to pray this up now <laughs> i'm trying to make it sound pretty i can't it's a, it's a no for me i mean it's I, a no for me i can get like <laughs> it's a no. how someone may perceive that as like okay it's not okay for me to come come out yeah but I have a whole... First of all, I don't feel like nobody needs to come out. Mm, what do you mean? Because if you are if you do what you do in mm. your bedroom with mm. who you do it with, who are you coming out to? I'm mm. not in your bedroom. That's true. So why do I need to know? That's true. 
some and the same gay dude who made this point said this other thing because he actually said what you just said. He was like, you know, people always say, um, I don't need I don't need to know what you're doing in your bedroom, whatever, whatever. But he was like, when it comes to being gay, especially a gay black man, you're put in situations that could, I guess, cause you harm. So that's why people that's why like gay people express express themselves about, you know, hey, I'm gay, FYI, whatever, whatever, just so they're not put in a situation where, like, they're with a straight man and now they're, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I guess they want to just kind of let people know because of the stereotypes and the stuff that could come with that, you know what I'm saying? So I, I can see it both ways. Mm-hmm. I can see it both ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, that's for the next episode, but <laughs> I guess our general consensus here is that we're going to say no. <laughs> no, we're going to say hell no. We're going to say hell no. <laughs> We're going to think about it and then say hell no again. But that does make me feel bad because yeah. like, okay, God, oh Jesus. Mm. I don't even put this out there. But if that was ever a thought yeah. and now we saying hell nah without it even ever oh, getting to the point of being a discussion. No, because we prayed it up. We, we said no, hell no at first. And then you said you're going to think about it. Okay, okay. And you're going to have the discussion. You're so gonna ask hell no nah is like how I feel about it. Absolutely. But I would still want him yeah. to talk and to me. And you never know, based on that conversation, you never know, based on that conversation, how it might change. So maybe mm, your hell true. no could be like, well, I can see how this might, you know, because... It's just another role. <laughs> you can I see mean, until he been over. Now, again, now, again, Mm-mm. when I'm putting the strap on, on I'm just not going to feel good about myself. Girl, you first got you, first you got to buy it. I know. I can order it. I'm sure I can order it. Okay, but that's even a discussion because then you got to know what he wants. <gasps> what he likes. Does he want the black? Does he, how, does, does do he like the vein? Uh uh-uh. uh. How do you know what you like? See, Girl, no, uh-uh. that's causing too much problems because, see, now we got issues with trust now because I'm going to be wondering. How does stuff. he know what he likes? hopefully right. now in a perfect world hopefully he irons it out because this is the thing it's just like we have a uh you know our vaginas are our hot spot they have a hot spot in their butts right so, right but how do we figure out what we like what do you mean oh lord we had it <laughs> yeah that is true mm-hmm. okay child well listen <laughs> this is TBD. <laughs> this is a more of a discussion because we want to be open, but we want to be truthful too. And I just don't, <laughs> I just don't see it happening. Let's dip into the meat of this discussion today. So we both, you're married, I'm engaged. We live with with these men and these family members, mm-hmm. and this has been something because I have not seen a lot of conversation checklist books anything you know red flag you know just alarms smoke signals like a lot of them where it says this is the kind of stuff that you need to discuss with your partner before you move in together so I have a lot of experience in this and I want to help somebody (laughs) I want to help somebody avoid some of the things that you know can happen if you're not prepared so we're going to go down our list here So here's my first question for you. Do you think, because you just said that you guys bought, you know, houses together. Mm -hmm. You guys did these things. Do you believe in people moving in together before they get married? Oh, yes, most definitely. Mm. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, why is that? Because you learn so much. Like, and I I can speak, um, I have a, my best friend did not do that. Okay. Like, but no, I'm not. How did that work out for her? I mean, it's working out great for her, but she's a, she's done a lot of work. Like, to get to the point of being able to communicate. Yeah. Her husband's really great too. So mm. like they for them and their relationship, it's working yeah. out. Um, for me and mine, um, no. <laughs> yeah. You gonna we gonna have to test yeah. the waters a little bit. No, I'm not doing that. And your key word there was communicate. Like mm-hmm. communication is a foundation of any kind of healthy relationship. And when you cannot communicate in a healthy way, in an effective way, I really do feel like you're doomed. Mm-hmm. Because if you cannot communicate with your partner and y'all cannot, I mean, obviously y'all going to be arguing. It's going to be arguments because you're human. It's going to be disagreements. But if you cannot consistently communicate, it's a wrap. And, that, yeah. and I feel like that's probably why it's working for them because they're able to say, hey, I don't like this or I like this or whatever. Because yes. they can communicate. You know what I'm and saying? And then they're, they're older too. Okay. I think okay. that's a factor too, like yeah. where you are in life. Yeah, because I agree. Sometimes when you're young, you just don't know. Like, and men, baby, and you be out here young and dumb. Young and dumb. And a young man is a scary man because a young, <laughs> I mean, a young man is different from a young woman. We all know that. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. I definitely think that um, you should move in with somebody before you get married because dating, 
stopping by, even staying over a couple of nights is a drastically different thing oh, yeah. than living with somebody day in and day out. I think like, I don't know about you, but like, I, like my parents are old school. My parents are, you know, they're older. And so they're all, about, they were all about you get married and then you move in. And I think mm-hmm. that's really kind of old school way of thinking. And people, as you can see around us, people are kind of getting out of traditional ways of thinking when it comes to certain things. But that's one thing I think we need to kind of throw out there. Like, mm-hmm. you need to move in together. Now, again, we'll get into it, but you got to have a plan. So, you right. know, if, if mar- marriage is important and, you know, depending on your how you your faith, you know, if you don't want to be living in sin, I get that. So have a plan. Have a timeline, but move in. Have, have that experience of living together <laughs> before you decide to get married. So here's the other question before you get into the list. Do you think that it's better, and tell me what you guys did, is it better to move into, like, one of the other person's homes or move into a joint home together? Ooh. Mm. Um, I think that, and I haven't done mm-hmm. each of these to okay. be able to know from experience. Mm-hmm. I think it may be better to move into a neutral place, like, together. Um, and because... Every live-in relationship that I've had has always been the person moving into my place, mm. right? Um, and it works out mm-hmm. with my husband and I. Yeah. But as I'm thinking back to how we went about that, mm-hmm. there was a lot. Like, I am I can easily be controlling. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Not that I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just naturally happens yeah. that way. Yeah. So I have to dial it back. Like I have to so recognize you, you have strong dial. masculine energy. I mean, like, like not manly, but you know, mm-hmm. you, you're alpha female. Energy. Oh yes. Oh Ooh. yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. You have a lot yeah. of episodes on that. <laughs> Cause everybody be want to say, I, I, my brother always say you're such an alpha female. I don't like being called that. I really don't. Oh, I don't mind. I don't like it. Like you can label it whatever you want to label yeah. it, but <laughs> it's mine. I don't want that there. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> So, but, so with that being you, are you saying that it worked out better, like, to buy it, another home? Because it's your, it's your territory. No. no? You know what? We, when we did that, no, still, because, because that's just my, that's my nature. Mm. Now, granted, my husband, he's a little bit more giving than okay. I am. So okay. he's the type of man who's like, okay, if this is what's going to make you happy, yeah. he's going to, like, let me take that's lead. That's good. That's a good balance. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yes, girl. That, oh. So I think, so Maybe it depends on your personality yeah, that's too. That's true. Which that's one true. you do? Because I don't think I could move into somebody else's space. Like I'm happy that he was able to move into mine, yeah. but if it was him saying, "Okay, well, maybe I have the bigger place yeah. or mine is more uh like cheaper in yeah. rent or something like that and mm-hmm. it makes more sense for us to come he- yeah. here." That would have been hard. I would have done it cuz I love him, but yeah. that would have been hard. See, I I have my own home. I moved into my fiance's home. And what I recommended, I would only recommend that if you go through this list (laughs) and if you have like discussion, communication, like you got to really ask couple other couples, um, do the research. YouTube is a valuable resource. Um, there needs to be, you cannot move in, whether it's my home, your home with anybody without a long conversation to me without they say premarital therapy, like um, counseling, you need to be have pre moving in counseling. Like it's such a eye opening experience. So I just don't know. I think it's okay to move into one of the other's home as long as there's a plan in place. Now, again, personality is a factor in that because I'm a planner. I like to organize. I'm an organizer. You know, I want to have things together. I want to have a plan. Um, and I think you got to approach anything to me in marriage and relationships with a plan, but especially moving in together with a plan. And I think these discussion topics are going to help kind of help you put your plan together. (laughs) Um, So we're going to start with the first thing that you should discuss before moving in. And that's finances. So I made a couple of things here, you know, how are bills paid? How are they divided? Opening bank accounts together, merging finances, credit scores, long-term goals, I think one of the biggest things for me was like, who going to pay what? That's a big conversation everywhere. 50, 50, who paid this, who paid that? What are your thoughts on that? You know what? We never had that conversation. What? Mm -mm. Not like a sit down, actual conversation. Nope. Do you feel like you wish you would have had it? I do. I do wish we would have had it. Um, I think 
our first after we moved in together, right? I remember there was a moment because I loved it. Yeah. I remember there was a moment where I walked in the room. I was getting ready to go to work, and I think he had had a long night or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't remember. Yeah, I just remember him handing me like some cash. Oh. And I was like, you like that? <laughs> right. I was like, what is this yeah. for? He was like, um, you know, take care of everything. And I was like, oh, oh, oh okay. wow, like this. But yeah, so and it kind of just morphed from there with like, okay. okay, this has to get paid, that has to get paid. How mm-hmm. are we doing this? And we kind of figured it out. I don't. If I had hindsight, hindsight being yeah. twenty twenty, mm-hmm. I would have liked to like come to the table, sit down, and say, "Okay, these are all the bills," because that's how I was. I was yeah. a person who would write everything down. Because when you start off broke, yeah. and you got to account for every <laughs> right. dollar, every little penny. Yes. <laughs> it's like, okay, I got two fifty going to this, <laughs> right? Three hundred right. going to there. Exactly. Like, you have to figure it out. Right. So yeah, so that's how I was, right. but that's not how he operated. Okay. And so once we started building things together, mm-hmm. we then had to go back. And have those type of conversations. So when y'all moved in together, he gave you the money to pay all the bills. Mm, girl, I didn't say all of them. Okay, <laughs> no, I'm trying to understand because, like, no. so because I'm trying to like wrap it around for the listener of like what should that conversation consist of? Like, mm-hmm. based on my experience, like I agree. I think that there should be. Listen, one thing I've always said in other podcasts is that um, you're marriage your whoever you're with it should be ran like a business you know mm. what i'm saying i think that you should have in her, in my perfect world you should have a weekly meeting i know that might sound od but a weekly meeting to see you know weekly monthly however you decide it mm-hmm. but how how is the money looking for everybody how are the finances looking for everybody how are the bills looking what's been paid what, what, what's got to be paid everybody's on the same page so there's no question mm-hmm. but see i think that's something you should do before you move in like especially if you're moving in with somebody, right? Because that's most of the time. Most people don't have it like that to like, hey, let's just buy a home. You know, not you know, not that I know of. Like, that's not the, the norm. So if you're moving in together with someone, give me a list of your bills. Give me a list of everybody's bills. How are you paying it? Whatever, whatever. We move in together. This are, These are the household bills. What are your thoughts? Let's talk about mm-hmm. it. But then also something that came to me from another couple friend of mine is that they do theirs based off the person's income. I was married before and like typically most of my friends, how I hear it, the man pays the mortgage, the woman pays the utilities and that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Um, But my friend was saying how in their marriage, they do it based on the percentage, like, and typically the man makes more. So it probably works out that way anyway. But there, there's an open conversation about this is what my income is. This is what his income is. It makes sense for me for me to pay these bills because it matches my percentage like mm-hmm. of, of income. So I make less than you, so I'm going to pay obviously less bills. But mm-hmm. having that conversation about what the money looks like, you have to have that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, we've actually done that before. Yeah, the percentage thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I saw a, um, a show or something mm-hmm. about it. Um, it works out fine for us. Um, with us, my husband is self employed. Okay. So there's not a like you're getting a, a check. The same check. Every, okay. Yeah. Got it. So that was that was hard for yeah. me to maneuver at first. Yeah. And I told you like I have uh I like to be in control of things. <laughs> <laughs> so I was accustomed to already paying all of my own yeah. bills. So a lot of the bigger bills I took on and I would wow. just tell him like, okay. These this is what I paid, yeah. and then you give me your contribution to that. Yeah. Okay. So and then I think when we bought our houses, when we started talking about the like, the percentage thing. Okay. Yeah, but wow. I think sometimes it has to change too as it does. like you change in life, like, and that's why those meetings are important. Mm-hmm. Like I I don't hear a lot of couples doing that, or I hear I hear it where they start out doing it in, in the beginning of honeymoon stage, and then they it just fizzes away. Um, but I would like to have it to where, like I said, we're having a weekly meeting and we have our folder and we're discussing everything financial. But before we move in together, I want to know the expectations around who is going to pay what. And I want to know the reason why, because I've also had it an experience of where in the beginning we say, this is what's going to happen, but we don't explain the expectations or the why. And so fast forward a couple of months in and now it's like, oh, well, you're not paying this bill. Well, we didn't discuss me paying that bill. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So that's why it's very important because bills come out of nowhere. Um, so that's why it's very important to put it, put it all down, put it all down, mm-hmm. <laughs> like discuss it the same way you would go to a work meeting. Like and oh, see, yeah. everybody not, not for that. Like everybody is not for that. But to me, if your partner is not wanting to be forthcoming with their finances and their information, that's another story. Yeah. 
I think some people are just uncomfortable with conversations that they deem are hard. Yes. 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 A lot of men are. Oh. Mm-hmm. A lot of men are. Oh. <laughs> but see, yeah, because they feel like, I don't know, I, I get the impression mm-hmm. that there's a feeling of if you're coming to talk about it, then something's wrong. Yes. Oh my gosh. I can't stand I that. Can- I cannot stand that. Yep. Me and see, I think we're on the scene. Like I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm alpha female, but I'm very direct. Like I'm a very Ooh. direct person. So I like to laugh, joke, have fun literally all day. That's what I'm doing. But when it comes to business and my friends say my whole voice changed, but cause when it comes to something serious, I want to find the problem, find a solution. I want to mm. have that shit mapped out. So there's no question. Here it is, but it don't mean that there's an actual problem. Let's just have a discussion. I cannot stand that. Like, yes. why well, think is because see, when you coming to the conversation with the mindset of, of there's going to be a problem, now you're creating a problem because you, you, you your energy mm-hmm. is coming there defensive mm-hmm. instead of coming here like, hey, what's going on? How can we benefit each other? <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? That, that, that communication and the way people communicate is a big, big factor mm-hmm. in everything. Yeah. So, like, when it comes to, like, credit scores and all those things, you think people should be forthcoming with that? You know, people got to be out of student loans. I know I got some, all that stuff. Um, Because, see, I think it's a factor, too. I feel like, can we say that if you're moving in together, either the plan is to get married, right? I don't know if you should go into it with that plan. What do you mean? I don't know. Okay, hear me out. (laughs) Yes. I recently listened to something where they were talking about how I think a girl was writing a a letter Mm -hmm. into somebody and she was saying how she had put all this time into her relationship and something happened. And she was like, I invested all of my time into you. So now I'm trying to figure out what to do. Like how do I think the guy must have cheated or something. Let's just say he cheated. Um, So it's like, I invested all of this time. So I think that for women, we think of our time as an investment and I don't feel like we should. So why not? My time because, is an investment. Well, not when it comes to a relationship. What do you mean? Because if something goes wrong, it, okay, maybe you can consider it that way, but then <laughs> you need to know when it when the investment has gone bad and it's mm. time to pull out. Yeah, let's, I let's agree. put it that way. Yeah, I agree with that. So I just feel like sometimes we have in our heads programmed like, okay, I'm on this track for marriage. Mm-hmm. So you're blinded by trying to get to marriage that you don't see everything else. So mm. I feel like it should be like a, this is a trial. like A move-in trial. A move-in trial. Really? Like, let's see That's a lot of money. Operate. <laughs> now, but see, but that's the whole point of having the, the conversation, the counseling before you move in together. Because I'm hoping relationships are going to be issues all for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so you can't avoid that. Um, but I think that, and I want to put emphasis on this. Like when I'm saying here are a list of things that you should discuss before you move in together. I don't mean make a quick little list, talk about it for 10 minutes and walk away. Mm -hmm. If you're even having an inkling, if you even dating somebody and it's been a good minute, eventually you guys are going to want to take it to another step, no matter how you guys define that step. Those should be conversations that you're having along the way. But especially when you feel like, okay, this is probably coming down the line Let's nip this in the bud now. And these should be ongoing conversations to get an idea of how people work. People being honeymoon. And I feel like this is kind of what you're saying. Like dating is a trial. <laughs> like until honestly, until we're locked in, we're married, whatever the case might be, this is all a trial. Cause mm-hmm. I can, you know, I can, I can really leave you anytime I want to, but for real, if we're not married, I can leave. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's, to me, it's all a trial, but having those conversations during to see if your 90 day trial subscription is up (laughs) or is it like you've been extended for another couple of years? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's all a trial, you know? That's true. So, so I think during that trial, like perfect word, like when you have a trial for a subscription, you testing that that thing out to see, okay, do I like this channel? Do I want to keep this little app or do I, do I want, do do I want to pay for it? I want to invest in it, pay for this app and keep it long term. Right. It's all a trial. And when you are in that trial period, you're gathering information to see what you want to do. Right. That's true. So So, if the, if the expectation is to get some marriage, mm -hmm. then just lay it out on the table. Lay it out on the table because that's the thing. People move in together and I mean, listen, people move in together and they just think, mm -mm -mm, people move in together and they think that, okay, we had this little 10 minute sound bite of a conversation about, you know, Hey, we're going to move in. And this is where, this is the goal. How big, how ambiguous of a statement is that? Oh, the goal is to get married. Well, I can get married to you two months, two right. years, 
five years down the line, timeline. Mm-hmm. Women be scared to have that conversation sometimes because they, they don't want to make a man, scare a man away. Mm-hmm. Scare, I want to scare a man away because if, if I can scare you away, then I don't need to be with you. You know what I'm saying? Again, that's the importance of having the conversation. My expectation for me personally, I'm just, you know, being random. If I'm moving in with you, I don't want to go, I don't want a year or, or two, and I'm just being, again, hypothetical. I don't want two years to go by and we're still just living together. We're not engaged. We're not married. There's no date in, in mind. If that's my boundary, if that's my expectation, I need to put that out there because right. I don't want to just assume that, okay, well, that's the goal mm-hmm. and that's it. Yeah. It comes with the conversation. This is what my expectations are. These are my boundaries. This is what I expect. What do you think about that? I think that's fair. I think yeah. you should put it out there. And yeah. I think even if 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 it's the opposite, if mm-hmm. you're like, okay, I just want to move in. Mm-hmm. Like, I like you. You like me. Yeah. If I love you, you love me. Right. We always together. Let's mm-hmm. just move in and see where it goes. Say that. Yeah. And yeah. if you're on one end of the spectrum and the other person's on the other one, I feel like everybody should be comfortable enough to say what the truth. they're, yes, live in your own truth exactly. and not cater to what somebody else wants, exactly. but have an understanding of, okay, this is what you expect. However, this is where I am. Like, can we figure out a path where we meet in the middle right. or do you want to check in a year from now? Mm-hmm. Like whatever it's going to be yeah. like, set that up. Yeah. I, I think agree. That's, I think yeah. you should do that. Yeah. So, so with you um, living w- with your partner before you guys got married, like, is there anything financially that you wish you would have honed in on or discuss more like looking back at it now oh yes all of it all of it yes I wish we would have because I wanted to yeah. but I, my husband is he's not a talker mm. and I will talk about any wow. and everything yes I think he talk. he comes out of his show more for me okay but if he can like he'll go days and just what do you mean days like he's I think he would be comfortable if he went days without talking to anyone like if he could live in a world where he did not have to open his mouth and talk, he would be happy. Doing that, that is, I'm gonna tell you, what, I'm gonna tell you what's interesting about to, about that because what I'm starting to find the older I get is that those kind of couple dynamics be working really well. Like <laughs> I know of a couple of couples where like the woman is so boisterous and you know loud, you know not loud, but you know you know mm-hmm. just extroverted, mm-hmm. and the husband is kind of like a mute. And I'd be like, mm-hmm. damn, how the hell that work? But I, what I see is that behind closed doors, the husband tends to be very different, you know, very open w- with the wife. Um, and it just seems to work. Mm-hmm. That is so interesting. So I guess it works for y'all. It's working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that work socially though? Like that's the only thing that get, that can get me because my ex husband was a mute. Oh, he no, no, he not talking to my friends like that. Really? <laughs> no. Oh wow. See, see that bothered me. Um, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, it bothered I mean, me. Sometimes, like then. if there's something that I really want to do, um, where I want him to like show up like his personality that I get to see it may, but I kind of like set it up in my head where I know like there's a chance that he's not going to. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that, I mean, as long as you're okay with that, because uh, this is the thing too, like that same man that maybe you're not dating because you don't think he's talking a lot will be the same man that's probably cheating on you. We're doing something crazy. You're liking every Instagram Mm -hmm. (laughs) model picture. You know what I'm saying? So you got to kind of pick and choose. And that's something I think women really, really got to learn. Um, so nothing in particular, I guess that we haven't discussed about like finances, like I'm trying to think. So like the bills is a big one for me, like the, the bills and having a list because I want to know what your household bills are. (laughs) And then when I move in, what the expectation is about who's going to handle what, I think Mm -hmm. that's kind of really what we're saying. That's, that's what it is. Period. Point, point. I also need to know who paying them, like who's actually setting up the payments. Mm, yeah, if because it's not yeah. on auto pay. And see, that's the thing, because I know, like, I'm I, I'm an auto pay girl. Like, I put, mm-hmm. I put myself on auto pay. I don't even go to the mailbox because I know my, my shit's being paid for. But then my partner is, I want to write a check. I'm old school. Like, I'm 1992. <laughs> I'm 1992. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like I want to do everything old school. So it's again, that's that's a conversation because some people don't even like auto pay. Some people don't, don't like that kind of method. But first, you're going to have to go back and explain what writing a check <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm listen, in the beginning, I feel like my fiance was, like, writing checks. And I'm just like, <laughs> where you even get that checkbook from? <laughs> I don't know nobody that's writing checks. You know what I'm saying? But, oh again, God. it's like, but see, I took on the utilities. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was handling those. But then you also got to be prepared if there's a financial shift. Like, less, because, you know, mm-hmm. like, like an example of mortgages, you know. Um, my fiance works in the mortgage industry, and so they took a really big dip 
and there are some things going on. So where there may have been an extra surplus of money on one end, maybe it kind of mm. lessened. So things change. So you got to have that conversation. So I think one of the bullet points I wrote down was having a joint account, you know, having an emergency joint account, like that's something you got to think about. Um, when you move in together, like, Anything could happen. Yeah. Anything could happen. And so if it does, you don't want to be in a position where it's like, well, we only discuss paying these these five bills here and you discuss this, but now we got this emergency. How mm -hmm. are we going to handle it? Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, let's also put, you know, a hundred dollars out of each month into this emergency fund. Right. You know, we, we both have a car for it. We both, you know, whatever we, we talk about it every week, every month, whatever. Um, you know, just having this thinking, just trying to be proactive in your thinking, like the what if, mm -hmm. how can we plan ahead for this so we don't run into being with, with somebody that can already be hard. So you don't want to like, you want to prepare as much as you can for stuff that could oh, happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what's funny? We never had that conversation about mm. like any, in case of an emergency. Yes. And what we did talk about, this has always been like a number one rule for me. Like mm -hmm. anybody who knows me knows I say this all the time. Yeah. If you can pay things, out of one person's income, like structure your life mm -hmm. so that everything that you all buy, you finance is covered under one person's yeah. income so that if something were to happen, yes, y'all are good. That's a good one. Well, we always did that, right? Yeah. But I never thought it was going to be my income. Uh, I know. You also want to be prepared for that player? <laughs> I thought, no, I, no, vice versa. I thought that I was going to be the one who was always stable. Yeah. Because I was worried about, okay, he's self-employed. Right. Like, what does that mean? Right, like, right. what if you don't have any clients? Right. Like, I was scared of that. Yeah. Like, not scared to where it was, like, always yeah. in my forefront. Mm -hmm. But we never had that conversation of, like, what happens if, if it's yeah. my income, the one that I consider stable. Yeah. And so when that happened for us, I was like, oh, uh, shit. <laughs> 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 Right. But see, that's smart. And I want to, I want to really drive that because to, cause I don't think we even do that. Like to structure your finances based off one person's income, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. then, I mean, like that's, cause then if you don't, if you don't run into a situation where that actually happens, you are able to maneuver your money. Cause you got a whole nother income yeah. that you really don't even have to tap into. Yes. Wow. Yes. I, that's something that I just, I taught myself yeah. through working in mortgage, like yeah. looking at people's credit, like, Ooh, child, you yeah. Seeing people life through their finances is crazy. Credit cards, living off credit yes. Cards. You will oh see God. people like you're a doctor. Like, sir, you making two hundred fifty thousand dollars mm. a year. Why do you have all this debt? Wow. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Okay. Listen. <laughs> Next tip. Oh my God. Discuss the damn chores. Now Ooh. I wanna at, at this point I wanna zoom this camera into our faces. Mm. Household chores and expectations. Who is gonna clean what? What do you define as clean? Who buys the groceries? Those type of things. Now, this one again, close one to me. So, to me, the big one out of this is defining what you see as clean. Okay. That's important because you can have a little conversation and say, you know what? Oh, I like to live a very clean, you know, I, I keep my house clean. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. If I, if I was to hear that, I might be thinking, okay, wow, they keep their house clean. That's all I got to hear. But a person's definition of what clean is to them could be very different than what clean is to you. Hey, thinking about moving in together, what do you define as a clean kitchen? What do you define as a clean bathroom? Who do you think should do certain chores? Those are conversations that you need to have and have outlined. And you can't just trust what somebody say. Oh, no. You gotta be in, like, you gotta really go to that person's home and see how they're living. And ask the questions. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Like, I, again, I don't want to get too personal. Oh <laughs> but, but, but it's just, you know, <laughs> it's defining clean. What do you think is clean? So for me, I'm going to tell you an example of this. My definition of, of a clean kitchen, especially at night, this is something that we bump heads about. I grew up my entire life when you, and I, and I took this on to my adult life, wherever I've lived, when the part, when the kitchen is cleaned, that final cleaning of the night. Nobody goes back into the kitchen oh, talk about using it. a bunch of different things. And now you got a dirty sink and dirty dishes in a sink. That is how I grew up. To me, that has always, always been my norm. My partner, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, I'll clean the kitchen or he'll clean the kitchen. The most of the time it's me. 99.9% 99 .9 of the time it's me. Clean the kitchen. Spotless. And then he'll, he might cook a whole meal afterwards. Um, he might, you know, use 
just random dishes, whatever. And the way he cleans a countertop is very different from how I clean a countertop. To me, I'm a spray. I'm a clean. It's going to shine. Mm -hmm. He could take his finger or, you know, like a napkin and just kind of clean. And it's really just smearing. Mm -hmm. So in his mind, he's cleaned the counter. In my mind, it's not, it's clean. not clean. Who does these things? Right. How do you define clean? Then it goes down to the chores, right? Mm -hmm. Who does what? Who cleans the bathroom? How often should the bathroom be clean? What do you define as a clean bathroom? Let me see what you think a clean bathroom is. Let me see what you think a clean bathroom isn't. You know what I'm saying? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Girl. This is a hard one. Mm. So here again, none of these conversations were had. Right. And again, I do also think age factors into yeah. this because like now being in my thirties, mm -hmm. like I think I would have thought about having these conversations, yeah. but when you're young, you're in your twenties, you live in life and you yeah. think you grown, but yeah. you're not grown. Yeah. You just assume that everybody else that you see as grown yeah. is on your level of grown. No, they're not. Oh man. That's so not. I think that the conversation starts with what did you do for cleaning as a kid? Mm, that's like what your mind. mama make you do that's very true because you adopt that as you go on yes, yes like what, something i learned was like everybody's household is different yes. and a lot of times you don't get to see how other people's households operate and the people who are in your circle usually operate the same, same way you do way, exactly. so you be thinking you be out here right. thinking like oh everybody, everybody had to get up on saturday mornings yeah. and put that music on and vacuum girl and that's no not the truth. everybody household don't do no, that no and that was very strange for me to understand <laughs> like what y'all did y'all laid in bed on saturday right like your mama didn't come waking you up uh, my mama, listen, on Saturday mornings was like, I listen, I'm grown now. It was the worst. Like, my, I had other friends who could just sleep. Saturday morning, first thing in the morning, this is how I grew up. This is what I adopted when I left the house. This is what I think is the norm. When I when I grew up, my mama got us out to bed every, it don't matter, every Saturday morning. We got up. First thing, no sleeping in, eat your breakfast, and then here's your list. We clean in trash cans, we're mopping, we're dusting. I mean, mm -hmm. our house wasn't even that huge. Like, I had to dust, I had to sweep, Every, everything had to be spotless. I had, it had to smell like bleach in the house before anybody could be free. Yes. <laughs> we, we was all cleaning for our Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's what that's Saturday what morning looks to like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's the norm. That ain't for everybody. Oh, man. Yeah. This def this conversation is probably, I feel like clean cleaning mm -hmm. needs to come before finances. Really? Yes. Because, like, you but, yeah. ha like, finances, you can figure that it's out. It's black and white. Finances are black and white, yeah. Like, as long as you know, like, I feel like when it comes to finances, mm -hmm. if you're able to be around that person and kind of peep into the fact that they're not lacking for anything yeah. or they're not, like, mm -hmm. just horrible, right. like, you can figure that one out. Right. The cleanliness. That's on go. Ooh. It never ends. Oh my god, you're right. I think that's probably number one oh <laughs> because finances, finances that, that could be a list and a check off and auto pay. We done with it. Mm -hmm. Cleaning is a daily thing. Like seeing socks on the floor. You know what I'm saying? Like and girl, I do try feel everything like on the floor. girl, really? try the floor is the table. <laughs> or here's another one. Here's another one. Not making up the bed after you get out. Like how I was raised. How how I, how I have adopted it. Being an adult. You don't leave your room in the morning until your bed is made. Mm -hmm. My daughter, my oldest, my oldest daughter knows she don't ever, she don't ever get out her room because that's how she was raised until her bed is made. When you, you know, become attached to someone else, that might not be their truth. And it might not be their kid's truth. It might not be their experience. Mm -hmm. So then it's like something so small that you didn't even discuss before y'all got together. Now is a damn argument. And yes. now you're, now you hating this man <laughs> because <laughs> every morning you wake up and you get out that bed first and he's out that bed second and that bed, I, you come back upstairs and that bed is not made. Now it's this, that can morph into something Way bigger. Way bigger. Way bigger. Way bigger because it needs to be a conversation. And, you know, I guess you might see those, like, I feel like whenever you stay over somebody's house, I don't know if you're really mm -mm. paying attention to those type you of things, you know? Come on now. Take it back. Remember mm -hmm. when he said, okay, I'm coming, and you run around the house and go put up all your stuff real quick? Yes, you're right. You're right. You're actually right. So it's that fake shit. Yes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, but, it's but real fake. It's the fake. <laughs> but when it comes to day to day, I never, I'm never, never not seeing you. It's day to day, and that bed is not made. That can hold some resentment mm -hmm. that grows into a bigger, bigger, bigger issue. Here's another one that to me I thought everybody did. 
and this is very minor. To, it's very minor, but it's not no more. <laughs> Leaving the light on above the stove. Do y'all do that? Oh, we used to do that. Yeah, that was like a, do that. That now? was like no, because now it's blown out and I didn't replace it. Girl, that's one thing. Like in our household, that was like a night light. That's a night light. <laughs> I thought that every household, that's another. When that light turns on, it's another key indicator that the kitchen is clean. Mm-hmm. Don't don't go in there. Mm-hmm. Don't go in there. Here, the light don't be on, and if it's on. It's made to be turned off. Like to me, I cannot stand coming downstairs and it's dark in the in the downstairs because there's no light on over the stove. That's the okay. that's the black family <laughs> anthem. When the light, when the kitchen light on, don't go in there. It's clean and leave it on until the yes. morning. Okay, so so now we gonna need to talk about like some ways y'all can meet in the middle because now they got other solutions for that. Like what? Girl, they the motion sensing. I don't want motion. I don't want motion. <laughs> I want the night light on under the stove. Like that, it just gives me a sense of comfort. It gives I me know. a sense of nostalgia, honestly, mm-hmm. because I grew up, mate. Well, I grew up like that. Like coming down the stairs, you know, at my parents' house, the night light is on. You know that light is on. Yeah. And that's also a key indicator. Don't go in that kitchen because the kitchen is clean and it's closed for the night. We're going to have to talk about how hard it is to step outside of how you were raised too. I don't want to listen. Cause that's hard. Like it's ingrained in you, right? Like a kitchen light, that shouldn't be a big conversation. Like no, why are you so upset about that? Being, not, 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 not you, but I'm just saying yeah. like, like somebody in general, like why would you be upset to, to have, especially if, if I paid a damn power bill, why are you upset to have a kitchen light on? You know what it is? Control. <laughs> no, it's not even control. It's like the stuff that you care about, you think about. That's true. The stuff that, like, if it's not a big deal to me, I'm not really thinking about it. Because mine is, my mama wasn't doing that leaving lights on in her house. Really? Oh, God, no. no not a kitchen light. We left oh, that on. Say, but yeah. I'm talking about, like, room lights. Okay, yeah, I agree. So, I grew up, it was normal for me to be in my bedroom, hanging out, chilling, and yeah. just have the blinds open. Yeah. Like, and until it's dark, what yeah. you need the light for? Right. Girl, right. my husband gets up. It could be bright and sunny. All oh the blinds are open. He is going to turn on every light. Like, if there is a light switch that Why? he has to pass, he has to turn it on. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. That is so weird to me. It is weird. That and is I'm very like, weird. What you mean? Like, if you walk in here <laughs> and there's enough sunlight, you can see. Yeah. So. Did you ask him why he does that? I have. He don't. He don't know. He it's, probably, it's probably how he was raised. Yeah, it's probably how he was raised. They. He also doesn't put the ironing board back. Ugh. See, that's one that I just let. Like, I just leave it alone. I don't. I don't care that much about yeah. it. But I noticed it, and it was just like, hmm, white never. So like, who puts it away? You do. Which it just stays up. What? When we first our first house. Yeah. There was enough space for that, right? Mm-hmm. So I would always get pissed about it because yeah. I would wake up, get up, and it's there in the, in middle, the middle of the bedroom. Yeah. So I would put it away. Yeah. Now, but when we bought our new house, yeah. we had to. It was a requirement that we have a laundry room. Yeah. Because I noticed that that was a thing. And I noticed it because we had gone to his parents' house for something. Mm-hmm. And in the room, they have an ironing board that just stays up. And I was like, oh. Wow. like we never, It never occurred raised. to him to tell me, like, oh, that's how it was. Yeah. when I. But I was like. Oh, like they mm. don't put it down and put it away. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's coming up? I know it's going to sound really stupid, but I think to me, what you said in the beginning will answer all of this. Most of this is that talk to a person about how they was raised and what, what happened in their household. How did they clean? How did, how did, how did they do all that stuff? This going to sound so dumb, but I'm picturing in my mind before you move in together, y'all should probably have a field trip around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Like go to the kitchen, walk around. What, what, what comes to mind here? Like, what is a normal thing for you in the kitchen? Like, how? Just you know, whatever. Go into the um, laundry room. What? How, what does this look like? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just having again. It sounds dumb, but because I have been married, because I have lived with you know a man before, I live with a man now. It's like I see the little things that could grow into big things. That mm-hmm. if they were just a discussion beforehand, and you're not gonna. You're going to miss stuff. Like, you're going to miss stuff. Like, there's, right. there's no foolproof checklist or whatever for that kind of conversation. But the more stuff you can get on the front end under under control and talked about and discussed and outlined, you know what I'm saying, and have a plan for it, the easier it'll be. So here's our next one. How do you sleep? So for <laughs> me, and again, this, this sounds minute. It sounds minute. 
But once you move in some move in with somebody, do you snore? Do you want the fan on? Do you want the door closed? Do you want the lights? Like all those type of things. When I go to sleep, I like to my entire life since since moving out of my parents' house, I go to sleep with the TV on, and then before but before I go to full sleep, I turn the TV off. I must have a fan on. I want to have my room door open. I want to have a light on in the hallway. Um, what else is it? And I don't want to really hear no snoring. That's a discussion. Cause if now, I was a man, I couldn't marry you. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe that's why I'm not married. Listen, now I sleep in a dark ass room with the door closed, no light, no fan. I mean, because yes. because we don't see eye to eye on that. First of all, <laughs> if the door is open, right, mm-hmm. and there's a nightlight, mm-hmm. worst case scenario, like there's a killer on the loose, mm-hmm. and he come in. And you sense that present and you wake up and open your eyes. You could just look out the room and he's standing right there. So, so you're saying have the door closed? Yes. I don't like that. I need Mm -hmm. the door closed. No, I don't like waking up and just seeing out into the Mm -hmm. nothingness. See, that's not how, like in our house growing up, we had the doors open. And now that I'm older, I realize my parents only close the door when they were probably having sex, which is disgusting. (laughs) Because sometimes they would be closing the door. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Did you have brothers though? I I have three older brothers. And the, oh, that's. Okay. We, at nighttime, everybody, you, in my parents growing, in my house growing up, nobody closed no doors unless you're like getting dressed or something like that. Then, but at nighttime, there's no closed doors in my parents' house. See, we had open doors mm. for a very long time until my mom got remarried, but okay. it was just a house full of girls. So that's why I asked mm. you, did you have brothers? Because yeah. then once my stepfather came into the picture, my mom was my mom had to teach us to close the bathroom door. Like wow. we didn't know yeah. that that was a thing. Like I I never experienced what it felt like to be in the bathroom with the door closed. Wow. Until she got until my stepfather came along. Yeah. See, I don't have any sisters. I just have brothers. But like we, I, I mean, obviously to go to the bathroom or to change our clothes. But like at nighttime, like no, there's oh. no closed doors. Like, so it feels weird for you. It feels very weird. Like I don't I don't like that. And to me, because I cause again we have kids, so it's like. I don't like the idea of being behind a closed door. Sometimes he would lock it and sometimes he still does. I don't like that. Oh, like yeah. I, I don't like to be behind a closed door and there's children in the home. Now I leave my kids' doors open. Yeah. But see if your doors if your door is closed. <laughs> well, I feel like there's not two buffers. So <laughs> now I can hear them. Yeah. But and and now my husband, he will like if he puts the girls to bed, mm-hmm. he will close the door. And but I get up during the night and check on them, so yeah. then I just open it. Yeah. See, and again, that's a conversation because like that that actually that changes my quality of sleep because like mm-hmm. for a long time, like not I don't get any of my checklists. You know what I'm saying? And because that wasn't a conversation in the beginning, like I do not like sleeping without a fan of some sort on. I don't like sleeping with all the doors around me closed. You know what I'm saying? I don't like, I don't like sleeping. Like, and again, this is another thing. How do you sleep at night? My fiance sleeps naked. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I don't like that. Like, I don't like to me when you're in your sheets, I feel like I don't want to, that's like being in your underwear in your sheets. I don't like that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, that's like that's like but your see, sheets being your underwear, basically. In your household, you slept with the door open, so you had to have clothes on. Yeah. But again, that... <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are back after technical difficulties. So, we we're talking about laying in the bed naked. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Laying yeah. in the bed naked. Like, how do you feel about that? Like, I, I just... That's something that I would have never thought to discuss before moving in together, but that's a conversation. I didn't know that... Thank God we didn't have to have that conversation. <laughs> Cause okay, so this is how I think about it. So so I'm assuming your husband sleeps in pajamas or something or like No, we both sleep naked. What? Yes. I'm trying to figure out why you don't. <laughs> like, every naked? now and then if I'm like cold and I want to be like cozy, oh I might put on God. something, but Yes. Maybe I'm the he, Now, my husband does something that I find is weird. He yeah. goes to bed with his underwear on, and then once he gets comfortable, he takes them off, and then they end up balled up at the bottom of the bed. See, and I, and so I guess that y'all don't need to have that talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's something to me that, like, I, it's just some, I guess for me, I've never experienced that. I've never, like, experienced going to bed with somebody and they're, like, totally in the nude. So, like, for me, it's just like, I like the element of surprise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like for me, I want to like, 
Will we get naked tonight? Will we not? Will we? Ha-? You know, I like that surprise. I don't want to feel like every single time I go, there you go, ready to go, during and ready to go. Like oh, I don't I never like that. Thought about that? No, because even like if we do like, let's say if I put on a little number, I I do <laughs> it, but I don't like the I, the process of taking it all mm. off. I don't enjoy that part. Really? No, not at all. Oh, see. Yeah. I mm. like, and I guess because, I guess in, you know, probably TMI, but, like, my partner is is a very overly sexual person, and so I know that every single day if we could, you know, if he wanted to, you know, it would be an everyday thing. And so for me, it's like, I want it to be to where I can, like, wonder. Like, I like the, I, I don't, I like the spontaneity of not knowing if tonight will be a night that we have sex or not. <laughs> Waiting for the moment. I want to wait for the moment. I don't want to just know, there it is. Let's go ahead and get to it. Like, <laughs> I don't want that feeling. I want to feel surprised. I want to feel like, are we? So you like, you like a little tugging on your, your garments. Yes. Like, yeah. It's like, oh. like I want, I like the whole, I'm just really weird. Like, like I like the whole, um, you know, like the whole, the process and of circumstance of like, Un- to pull, I want to. I, I like the build up. Oh, okay. I don't want to just jump into it. I gotta have the build up, and I got. I gotta have the thought. I don't want to go to bed like knowing there it is, and I'm gonna have to do something with it. Like I oh, no, like, I just... you know, what I'm saying I want just the curiosity. I, I want to not know. I, I want to not know that you might be ready to go. Mm-mm. That's not what closed it for me. <laughs> It's high. It's two of us up under these oh covers. No. So do y'all sleep with the fan on at night? No. Um. Every now and then, if it gets hot, we might like turn the ceiling fan on. But wow. like to have an actual fan, the only time I've done that is when I'm pregnant. Wow. So that leads us to the next thing to discuss: temperature in the house. Oh. This is a really, really, really <laughs> big one. Like. Again, you could have told me that, that this would have been something necessary to discuss before moving in, before mm-hmm. now. Like, I think, so I'm going to tell you my situation. We don't turn the air conditioning past 75, like, most of the time. And, Wait a minute. And, and which, it's a, past which direction? Like, to 74, 73, 72. It, it doesn't go down. In the This is a daily argument in the, in the household because... Something that I should have discussed before and something that you should think about <laughs> to discuss before because... <laughs> This is literally a daily discussion. Mm-hmm. I like the air to be in, in my home that I like my own home. I like the air to be on like 73. Okay. It's, it's 90 degrees outside mm-hmm. lately. 90 degrees outside. So I want to come in. I want to be able to be cuddled up in, on the couch. You know, I want to be able to eat at night. If it's 73, I want to be able to cuddle up in my, mm-hmm. in my blanket. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's a discussion. What temperature, what does your temperature look like for you in the summer in your home? Our temperature will forever fluctuate because Mm -hmm. I grew up in a household where my mom was like, oh, you don't touch the thermostat. Yeah, me too. So I decided as a little kid, (laughs) no matter what I do in life, I'm going to make enough money to be able to touch the thermostat. (laughs) Yes. I don't care what the bill look like. Right. I need to be comfortable. Right. So right. for us, it's just about being comfortable. Mm. Like if I come home and I'm hot, then I'm allowed to not yeah. be hot. So I'm going to turn it to whatever I need to turn it to, to not be hot. And then if he's cold or if he's hot, then you adjust it for what you need. And we just go back and forth throughout the day and we just pay the bill every month. See, mm-mm. that's something, maybe not, that, maybe that doesn't need to be on your <laughs> list, but to somebody out there, I know it got to yeah. be on their list. And it's like, what does the HVAC AC heat temperature on a day-to-day basis, what do you think that should be on? And again, you might not think that y'all need to discuss this, mm-hmm. but it's something that I should have discussed, yeah. something that somebody else out there will need to discuss. What does an AC temperature look like for you? Like, okay, another example, my brother and his wife, she says that she's always in, in their house really, really cold because he keeps the air on like 70 71 72 um, mm-hmm. like really really cold um but the thing about it is i'd rather be cold and just put on a a, a sweater mm-hmm. than be hot or uncomfortable and i can't take my skin off you know what i'm saying so that's for me. them so for them it's like they, that's the issue for them but she's fine because she'd rather be cold than be hot but that's something that they might have to, you know wanted to discuss like how it seems small but if you're not open to meet in the middle it could be a argument mm-hmm. later down the line 
you know? It's funny because it's like all of this boils down to like what you need in order to live comfortably and your expectations. Yeah. And it's like you don't really, uh, sometimes you don't think about it until you get into the situation you and don't. it's like, Damn. You don't. That's why I said they they need to have. I might make this and sell this job myself. <laughs> they need to have a checklist. They need to have a checklist of things. I mean, it's it's very basic. Just a basic checklist of like discuss this, discuss yeah. this. You know what I'm saying? And then have it broken down because it's like, again, I would have never thought about the. I, I'm thinking who black don't turn the light on over the stuff. <laughs> and and I'm also thinking I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thinking of how important that is to me to have the light on over the stove right. you know what I'm saying or even so, have night lights on around the house like that's so you important. probably wouldn't even have that on the list I wouldn't have because you it was just a, a given it was a given because I'm thinking about my experience but, but like mm-hmm. you said in the beginning what did what did it look like for you like take that field right. trip come into the house y'all go to every room y'all and look at everything about- and talk about every everything you see and what does this mean to you? Because it sounds dumb, but if we get to the kitchen or if we even get to the hall and I'm pointing to the nightlight I have on. So is this thing, is this nightlight important to you? It is. I mm-hmm. want to have my nightlight on in my, I want to have a nightlight on all through the house at night. Cause that's what I like. That's how I feel comfortable. It is where it is. You know? <laughs> Meanwhile, there's other of us just stumbling around feeling. Right. That's crazy. Like I, I'm just like, I have, I've, I can since I moved out on my own, but my first home nightlight stole light. <laughs> air conditioning on 73 like you know what i'm saying these are things that to me are normal so another thing to discuss that might not seem normal to you but pet peeves mm. pet peeves of your partner so again this is before you move in together so when you just dating and just seeing each other randomly it's not a big deal because them things ain't gonna be all the time because you're not around, around each other all the time but when you move in together those pet peeves that seem cute and small when y'all just dating or coming, to, you know, to house to house randomly will get on your nerves. Mm-hmm. One of my biggest pet peeves is the sounds of people chewing. It don't matter who it is. <laughs> I do not like to hear the sound of anybody chewing at all. Not even myself. Like, mm. I like if I'm eating something and I feel like, oh my God, am I chewing loud? I'm like, ew, this is disgusting. Like pet peeves, like pet peeves. You have to discuss, like, you know, I know we've been dating for a while and this, I'm going to let, because again, y'all should be friends. Y'all should be able to communicate, you know, health in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. Not that they can really change it, but at least be aware, aware of, of it. it. Yeah. You know, hey, no, no offense, but I noticed that when you chew, it's very, very loud and it makes me feel un- uncomfortable. <laughs> maybe you can't change it, but at least now right. you're aware. So if, if if I'm looking at you funny while you're eating, then at least you know. Yeah, you're mindful of it. You know, okay? Like, Here's another one. Um, what are the expectations when you both work remote? That's a new thing. So like, like, you know, people working remote is very normal now. And a lot of households have both partners home during the day all throughout the day, mm-hmm. how does that look to you? Is a question to ask your partner. Like, do you want to be talking to your partner all day? Do you want to, you know what I'm saying? You know, like something to think about, you know what I'm saying? Do you want to, um, like, are you the kind of person that would like to be left alone the entire time when you're working? Don't bother me. That's something to discuss because that's our new normal. Yeah, that is, you know, so I, that's like, I definitely didn't right, think about that. Right. Yeah. Cause a lot of, a lot of couples are, under that same household, under that same roof all day long. That would drive me crazy. Yeah. And that's our reality. Like, you know, we're both here all day. For me, when I'm working, like, don't talk to me. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially if I'm super busy. Like, I'm kind of zoned in, you know. And even if you hear me kick in with my friends, I don't mean I want to kick in with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, my that's God. That's the thing. So true. You know? I mean, it sounds bad, but, like, I wouldn't normally. It's not the norm to be around your partner all day. And then all night it's not mm-hmm. the norm so tell me how does that look to you because somebody might need to go in the office somebody might need to go in the office <laughs> and, and behind a, um a brick building you know what i'm saying <laughs> here's another one communication expectations when there's problems that so is a big, big one. it's big it is big i think that we are dealing with that now really yes we've been on and off for a few years mm-hmm. um and i always tell my husband i'm like you know what I want to talk about things after they happen. And I'm now learning through observation because, mm-hmm. like I said, he's not really a big talker. Yeah. Um, for him, 
when things happen, mm -hmm. it's it's happened and it's over. So discussing it. What do you mean? Like if we get into an argument or oh, altercation no. or a disagreement, anything. Yeah. Once that's happened, the thing that happened no, is over. That's not how that works. Yes. Yeah. No. Yep. Still unpacking that one. So <laughs> important because you know why? And I, we literally just had this conversation yesterday. Like, cause my fiance is kind of the same way in my head. If there is an issue, whether, because what I do realize and what I have realized through, through therapy is that whereas I'm the kind of person that I need to walk away because I know my mouth can get reckless. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in a conflict with, with my partner, I need to walk away have some time to myself, get myself together, and then come back when I'm level-headed. Mm. Some people want to stay there in it no matter how heightened of a situation it is and talk about it and talk about it at that time. So you have to respect how your partner communicates in that way. Like, do you need time to decompress and then come back? Because I don't want you to talk to me if you're on 10, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, because you're still in a heightened of the moment. Like, let's come back together when we're level-headed. That's, like, number one. But then it's like... When you have to come back. Right. You have to come back and talk about it because what's going to happen is if you don't talk about the issue, it's going to happen over and over, over, and over again, again because now you don't know what, what made the issue be an issue. What happened? Yes. So what happened to make us get... Because this shit be seeming so basic. Like, this, 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 this is what get me. It seems so basic. Like, there's an issue. You have an issue. I have an issue. You have your view of the issue. I, have, I have my mine. view of the issue. Yes. Let's come together and be like, okay, well, tell me how you see it, mm -hmm. what you think it is. I'm going to tell you how I see what I, what I think it is, and how can we meet in the middle? Right. Because then that gives you a that? chance to have that light bulb moment. Like, yes. oh, I, I was wrong. it now. Yeah, I was yeah. wrong. You and wrong. it could be nobody was wrong. Right. It could just be like we seriously did not understand right. how you saw person. it. Yes. Yes. That's why we want to talk about it. Which I like to talk about anything and everything. <laughs> but that's good. But that's, but that's healthy. Yes. That's so and healthy. I think for him, he just be like, See that you got to nip that in the bud mm -hmm. because you know what? Cause like I said, what that'll do is a lot. And people like that sometimes like they let things fester and fester and fester. And then, then it, something small that could have been fixed through a quick conversation can build up. Mm -hmm. And now two months later, you're bringing up something from back then when y'all could have nipped it in the bud. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But now you let it build up and now it's this big issue. Yep. You know? But I feel like the, a part of that comes from nobody taught us how to be in a relationship. So it's like, if you think about it, when what it's like high school, you go into like your first relationship and you're like, oh, I like you. You like me. So now we, we together, we yeah. boyfriend and girlfriend. And then your relationship progress goes from that point on. Yeah. You you have to realize this stuff all on your own. Yes. Nobody ever talks to you and yeah. says, OK, this is what it needs to look yeah. like. Like you even people who grow up in two parent households, like you don't get to see your parents yeah. relationship. You're you're on the outside looking into it. You're right. So it's like. These type of things, even though, yeah, you need to have the conversation up front, I feel like what you said in the beginning about having the check-ins is also very important to establish mm -hmm. the guidelines for when are we going to check in again? Like, this is the upfront conversation, yeah. but then when are we going to check in again? And what is giving each other grace look like right. to be able to sit down and have these right. conversations and know that, like, we're okay. Yeah. We went through a tough spot, yeah. maybe today, maybe this week, mm -hmm. like, so let's talk about it. Right. And see, like, I, like, I'm a project manager. And so we have th these things at the end of a project called a retrospective meeting. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, like, again, I am, I am OD when it comes to this is a business because I, I want, I want, I want my business to thrive. I want to make money in my business. I, I want to be happy in my business. I want to be meeting certain metrics, like in a job in my business. And I, that's how I want to approach my relationship. Mm -hmm. So I want to be, I really, and I'm going to start doing this this week. I think about, cause I'm, I'm not even doing this in my real, <laughs> in my real life. I'm talking about it, <laughs> but I think I'm going to start doing this where we meet every Friday because it's the beginning of the weekend. How did this week look? What went right? What went wrong? How do you want to spend the money? How do you want the weekend to go? Those kind of conversations will alleviate a lot of issues and a lot of arguments. Mm -hmm. You know, just meeting, just having a sit down, intentional meeting with your partner every single week. Mm -hmm. Every single week. Okay, I'm going to do two more. All right. How do you feel about entertaining guests? Again, this seems small, but I've been in a situation where I'm the kind of person where I like to entertain. I like mm -hmm. to have people over the house. I like to like, you know, have a little get togethers, kickbacks, whatever the case might be. I've had a partner that did not like that. You mm. know what I'm saying? And we didn't discuss this before we moved in. So where I'm like, oh, it's Friday night. Let's invite someone John Doe over and, and his wife and have drinks, whatever. And they're like, no. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It seems small. But it's something that you should discuss. Oh, like, yeah. you know, how do you like to, do you like to entertain in the home that we share now? 
you know Mm -hmm. you guys entertain a lot no actually we don't really um i've always wanted to Mm -hmm. but i think once we started settling down and then we had kids back to back it was just like "Mm -mm, i'm not about to do all this cleaning up to have people change everything (laughs) lord jesus that's a whole other um whole other podcast like it's all other podcast but just a basic question like that you know Mm -hmm. how does entertaining look to you do you like having people over that's one thing okay then the willingness to go to therapy you know i think that's a big one Cause we a, actually yeah. talked about that up front. Really? Yes. Up front. Not, not like on a planned yeah, thing, but yeah. earlier in our relationship, yeah. I should say, we talked yeah. about that. Yeah, because I was just like, mm. So what made that come up? Um, Us not seeing eye to eye. Yeah. 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 So I think it comes up for people who haven't been, because I've never mm-hmm. really been, yeah. but it was just like, okay, well, this is a relationship that I really, really want to work. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that as you grow and you go through different stages of life where you've been with different people, mm-hmm. you've able to identify when you get to that stage of like, this one is not like, Oh, I just, I'm, I love you. And I, I'm hoping that it works, yeah. but like, I really want to invest in this working. Yeah. Yeah. So then it takes on another level of you wanting to do more work. Right. So right. I feel like that becomes a part of it because now you're not just like, maybe nitpicking what your partner does, but you're also trying to figure out, okay, well, what am I doing and how can I fix this? So that's how that conversation came up because it was just like, I was starting to realize a lot of stuff about myself that I never really considered before. It was like, well, if you love me, this is me, you know, you just, this is who I am. This is Trishina. So if I get mad and I walk out and I slam the door, well, you made me mad. So (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) But now I was like, whoa, wait a minute. You didn't have to slam the door. You didn't have to walk out. So it's like, yeah, Stuff like that is what made it come up for us. And initially, my husband was like, nah, I'm not doing really? that. Really? Really? Yeah. Is he, does he still feel the same way? He does not feel the same way uh-huh. now. However, um, I'm 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 not great at following up mm-hmm. with things that I want to do that's outside of like work work. Yeah. But um, being that we never actually went, mm-hmm. I did some research. It didn't pan out because yeah. I, I hate doing research. Yeah. Um, what ended up happening was I started buying books. Okay. I buy books, or he buy like a game. So we mm-hmm. we try we try to do things like that. Yeah. We're not very consistent with yeah. it, but I feel like at least we're willing to try that. Yeah. So it'll grow into us possibly going yeah one day so i feel like you know i think the reason why that's a very important one to discuss before you move in together is because typically when you're moving in together that's when you're at the best you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. things are really great things are really perfect and you're not thinking of again what could go wrong what could happen this is why you need this checklist <laughs> so it's like okay Things are going great now. Things have probably be, probably been great before we decided to move in together. That's why we're moving in together. But in the event, because let's just face it, in reality, people divorce is at an all-time high. People mm-hmm. are, like, cheating on each other and doing all types of dumb stuff. And, you know, things, relationships are go bad a lot. I feel like publicly more than they do go good publicly, which is another story. But um, what can we do and how can we plan in the event that things go left? If things tend to go left and we're at a space where we need to talk to an outside third party, are you open to doing the work and going to see a professional who can help us get back on track? Mm -hmm. Are you open to that? Mm -hmm. Like, again, nothing that you would think, and I keep saying this, this is nothing that you would think of going into it because things are are great. So I'm not thinking of, you know, what could go wrong. I'm thinking of how great shit is right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But... You don't want to be in a situation where in your mind things are going so good and life happens. And trust me, it will happen (laughs) whether in the beginning or the end. Life is going to happen to you. So when it starts to happen, you want to make sure that you're with somebody, that y'all are aligned on seeking help, seeking therapy. Because you don't want to be in a position where like, damn, shit's going wrong left and right. We need to see a therapist. Boom. Hey, let's. I, I found this therapist. Let's go. Oh, I don't want to go see a therapist. Mm-hmm. You don't want to run into that because now you're stuck. You're stuck. And if you don't want to see a therapist because you're having that conversation ahead of time, you can see, okay, well, what? why do you not want to see a therapist? Like, what has happened to you? Have you not had a good experience? Let's talk about that. And then let's hopefully get on the same page because if I got insurance, I'll pay for it and it'll help us. Why not? Right. You no? Know? Yes. Why not? Um, so that's, that's super, super important. That's, that's something to definitely add on to the checklist. <laughs> and last but not least, which one do I want to do for last but not least? <laughs> okay. We, we did a lot over the stove. Um, mm, here's the last one we're going to do. 
How do you define your personal space and what your needs are around your personal space and private time? So a question to ask before you move in together, how do you define your private time, your private space? How does that look? Is that something that's important to you? Your self-care time, all those type of things. Is that important? And how does that look for you? So I can make sure whenever we decide to move in together, I'm not dipping into your alone time, dipping mm-hmm. into your self-care time, because that's something, again, I would have never, ever thought to ask, you know? Um, but as the years have gone by, I'm the kind of person that I really do like my alone time. I like to have my self-care alone, you know, light a candle, be in the bathroom, doing whatever I be in there doing and having that. And it's important that you know that that's important to me. So when you see me step away, you're not feeling slighted. On the other hand of that, my partner is very important at the end of the day for us to like, you know, be in the man cave or like be somewhere like kind of together. And for me, that's, especially with a little baby, that's not as important. But again, I know that that's important to him. So I have to make that on my priority. Now am I doing it? (laughs) I'm a work in progress. But, you know, just having that conversation, I know that it's something that's very, very important to him, you know? Yeah, I feel that. Um, I think uh, sometimes it can also happen organically, but having that conversation up front, especially if you have, like, a a routine type of, like, I a like routine. to do yeah. this. Like, yes. please don't it. Like when you see this door close or when right. you see me go in my closet or whatever right. it is, like right. don't come in here asking me for anything, exactly. like whatever it may be. Yeah. Cause exactly. I, cause then if you feel like somebody's imposing on that, you get mad. Yeah. It causes then it's resentment. Gonna be a problem. And something small that could have been a conversation turns into something big. And it's like, it's not necessary. Now it's not to say that, Oh, if we discuss this in the beginning, then everything's out of the way, then we're perfectly fine. You need right. to be discussing this year over and over mm-hmm. and over again and making sure. And again, that's the importance of them weekly meetings because then it can be like, just a reminder. We discussed this and this is what I like this is what I don't like. And let's yeah. just nip it in the bud. Mm-hmm. Before we go, you just mentioned something about you guys playing games and having your therapy that way. So do not forget that we partnered with Unpack That Game. I'm going to put everything in the description below. You can, and I don't know how long my code going to last. <laughs> so you can get 20% off of the Unpack That Therapy in a Box game from last week's episode. When I tell you... If y'all don't, if y'all believe in playing games to get to like, you know, to dig in deep, that game right there, oh my God. I don't know who created them questions or or that game, but I really see why they call it therapy in a box. It it had us kind of, on on, on the episode last week, we was kind of like, not arguing, but it was kind of, it kind of got, you you can tell looking at at the YouTube video that was like, you know, like it was like, we, we recording, but after we record, but after we recorded, we had a great conversation and played the game even more. And kind of like, you know, dig deeper into them cards. And it, it really ended up with a really good conversation, which is really the importance of any, you know, of being with somebody is being able to have tough conversations, communicate and understand how somebody thinks. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So don't forget to click that link in the description box. And the promo code is Melanie P M E L O N E Y P for 20 percent off. How was your first show? How do you feel after this that was first awesome. show? This was awesome. Love it. Minus the technical difficulties, it was great, y'all. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to the That's Scary with Melanie P podcast. You know where to find us on Instagram and on YouTube, That's Scary with Melanie P. We will see you on next week's episode.